open 501. were to watch this interview and say, I want to help that kid, what would you hope somebody would want to help do or help make life better for you? I mean, the main reason why I do most of the things I do because by me growing up, I never really had everything I wanted. And now that I know how to get it, which is in a bad way, but I know how to get it, I get it but I get called for it. So really, I just want somebody there for me. Not say I just want everything, but I want somebody to make me there for me, help me get what I want. When you in these rooms, that's all you got is time to think. So if you say you ain't got time to think, then you lying. Something wrong with you because that's all you got is to think. You lock down 23 hours a day and most of the time 24. So I think about like I'm about to be 18 April 28th. And I've been locked up 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. I was out lucky. And all the others I was out with. That's all my teenage life. And it's like being like a dog locked in a cage. There ain't really nothing you can do. You gotta make something out of something. having fun with all of them. I like we used to fighting, throwing cheers, acting the fool together. So when I'm getting out, I know I can't be doing all this because there's I'm gonna get a big chance to get locked back up. So like I do say it was fun, but I don't want to be here no more, man. I miss my little brother too much. I'm a real nice kid, man. If you really get to sit down and know me, but it's just people probably think I'm a bad person because of things I do but they gotta think about what the things I do and why I did it. So really, I'm really a cool kid, man. It's just the things I do to get what I gotta get. They arrested you for criminal mischief, theft, and criminal trespass. Those are your charges. problems, so really wasn't nobody there to leave me on. Really don't know my daddy like that, so really had nobody there to really 
teach me what to do and what not to do. I was just really on my own. I just happened. I was getting told that they was gonna come visit me a lot. All that at boy school. But then I got used to it because it wasn't that they was lying. It's just my grandma used to tell me it's called tough love. So I guess that was her way of punishing me, like no visits. She rocked me right now and then, but it's cool. And I'm used to it now. Like when I first got here and I was in my county, I never even filled out a visitation list because I knew they wasn't gonna come. And my mama, she don't even write me. Never had wrote me not one time since I've been here. Talked to her at uh, when I was at the county, like around April something last year, about a year ago. Last time I saw her was when I was out, which is 2009. I know she cared about me deep down, but she don't show it really. I can't really blame it on my family history. Cause I know most of the stuff that I do, I do, I do it like it's my fault. But I can say like, if I probably would have had a better background, like, I would have had a pocket for you there and like to leave me on. And my mom, she was always locked up too. When she was, when I was young, I can name plenty of times that she got locked up. But probably part that's probably part of it. But if I had a family there for me to do all that, I wouldn't do none of this. And I got a family, but they can't really support me like that. So that's why I like. I get into argue with a couple of them because I be like, y'all oh, family kids, why y'all do this? I mean, I wish I had a family. And I do, but really, it's all messed up. I mean, I'm trying hard. I'm trying hard. I mean, because I got ADHD. I'm not gonna blame it on that, but in my room, I ain't got much room to run around and do what I want to do. So, kind of like stress a little bit in there. And I'm really sleeping here because people talk, kick on the doors, but I'm really used to it because I've been locked up so long. And I've been in this situation before already, so I'm really already used to it. So if you had asked me this back when I first got locked up doing this, I was stressing a lot. And I was like, I wouldn't say I was scared because I was locked up, but I was scared because where I was at at that age. But I mean, I really got used to it now, so got to deal with it. I was talking to my attorney and I was hoping, I was begging her like, if y'all can put me on house arrest, because they put me on house arrest, I never cut my person off because that's just saving me. I ain't gotta go nowhere. But they just put me on ostrich and give me a job, man. I, I probably won't do half of the things I do. Really just, I regret doing it now, though. Cause I'm really missing all my child life, but I gotta wish. Wish I could get out of here earlier than I can. <laughs> if we were gonna come visit you in a couple of years, five years, what do you think you'd be like? What do you think your life's gonna be like? Well, if you said five years, I will be out of here. And hopefully I'll be living good how I plan. I mean, I mean, I, I, bet, I hope I'll be living good how I plan. It's a small world now. So if somebody, if you got out and somebody said, okay, I'm gonna set you up with a decent apartment. Or we're gonna set you up with a job. We're gonna get you started. Do you think that would stop you from? Yeah. Really? I already said that. I was talking to my attorney, and I was hoping, I was begging her, like, if y'all can put me on house arrest, because they put me on house arrest, I never cut my person off, because that's just saving me. I ain't gotta go nowhere. But they just put me on house arrest and give me a job, man. I, I probably won't do half of the things I do. So you don't think you would still feel the need to, to rob no. or get things in a bad way if you had a job and were living a normal life? Because I know that, I mean, I can pay for it still, but it's just the way I get the money to pay for it, it gets me in trouble. But like if I'm getting the money and it's money that's legal money, 
And I wouldn't do it because I know that I'm all good. So can, are you nervous at all thinking about, I mean, right now you're in the youth unit, but obviously you've been in SEG. And you're going to be in SEG for a while more. Are you nervous at all about the thought of eventually being in with thousands of other adult prisoners? Does that scare you at all? No? No, I don't. You don't feel like you'd be a target because you're a young kid? No. No. Do you think that's ultimately where you're going to be? I can't remember what you said. You're outdated. I said I did it September 19th. And what was your initial sentence? What they sentenced you to? How many years? Eight years do four. Eight years do four. So you will have served a year, a little over a year, by the time you get out of SAG? Close to two years. But I've already maxed out, so my outdate is 2018 right now. Your outdate is 2018? And it's 2011? But today, I've been clear for three months, and they got some type of little thing where if you go clear for A and B writer for six months, three months, you, go, you get your credit class back. You got three credit classes. You start off on credit class one. I'm supposed to get, uh, my, go back down to credit class two today, so my out day going to go down to 2015 today. You think you can do it? You think you can not act a fool, as he said? I mean, I'm trying hard. I'm trying hard. I mean, because I got ADHD, I'm not going to blame it on that. But in my room, I ain't got much room to run around and do what I want to do. So, kind of like stress a little bit in there. And can barely sleep in there because people talk, kick on the doors, but. How do you process that mentally? Like every day when you wake up, you know, I'm in SAG, I'm going to be in SAG for another six months. Mentally, what does that do to you? How do you process that in your mind? I'm really used to it because I've been locked up so long and I've been in this situation before already, so I'm really already used to it. So if you'd have asked me this back when I first got locked up doing this, I was stressing a lot. And I was like, I wouldn't say I was scared because I was locked up, but I was scared because where I was at at that age. But I mean, I really got used to it now, so try to deal with it. What would you want people on the outside to know about you? What kind of kid you think you really are compared to what people might think you are? Well, I can't say I am smart, talented, and I love sports. I mean, I'm a real nice kid, man, <laughs> if you really get to sit down and know me, but it's just people probably think I'm a bad person because of things I do, but they got to think about what the things I do and why I did it. It's because I don't got nobody here bonding for me. Nobody. I mean, I got people like my grandma, she tried to give me a hundred dollars every month. My shoes that I buy just a hundred dollars by itself. So there really I ain't done that hundred dollars really didn't do nothing. Same way you gave me that, it's gone in one minute. So really, I'm really a cool kid, man. It's just things I do to get what I gotta get. Would you say overall you think kind of all the kids in a place like this are deep down good kids? Or what would you what would you say to people about kids in the system in general? I can name a handful of kids. I'm not gonna say their name because probably not my problem to say that, but I can name a handful of kids that I know that's real smart. And it's a couple of them on the juvenile on the juvenile side that got family there for them that want to, that they don't like, they got family members buying them, got good money, buying them everything that they want. And they trying to be all, all hardcore and try to hang out in the streets. But when like, if I had a family there for me to do all that, I wouldn't do none of this. And I got a family, but they can't really support me like that. So that's why I like, I get into argue with a couple of them because I be like, y'all family kids, why y'all do this? I mean, I wish I had a family, and I do, but really, it's how I messed up. Last question. If we were gonna come visit you in a couple of years, five years, 10 years from now, 
What do you think you'd be like? What do you think your life's going to be like? Well, if you say in five years, I will be out of here. And hopefully I'll be living good how I plan. I mean, I mean, I, I, bet, I hope I'll be living good how I plan. Small world, though. Final wish? I got a wish. Wish I could get out of here earlier than I can. I mean, that's it really is. Just wish everybody that got problems would make better for them. It's hard to wrap your head around the different types of kids at Wabash. From Colt Lundy, a 15-year-old with no history in the system, doing 30 years for conspiracy to commit murder, to 18-year-old Robert Beeler, serving a two-year sentence for battery and threatening to kill a police officer. My name is Robert Beeler. I'm at Wabash Valley. I'm at CCU for a fight. Beeler is at the start of a three-month stint in segregation. We was playing cards, we got, got, got into it, and he smacked my face with the cards. So I ran up on him from the back, hit him a couple times. Then he's on the ground, I start kicking him. So what brought you to Wabash in the first place? I wanted to see my brother though, because he's in a juvenile block. So I got in trouble just to come here. You got in trouble on the outside yeah. to get arrested so you could come to Wabash to see your brother who's already here. Yeah. It didn't work out that way. They moved him. I, the, the day before I got there, he went to the dog block. What's your first memory of getting in trouble or doing something bad? Do you remember how old you were? I was nine. I was at school. And I got in a fight. So I grabbed a chair and I threw it to the teacher. And he tried, he tried to grab me. I grabbed his watch and I split his wrist open. So he locked me up. I'm sitting with the juvenile. I like it. So would you consider yourself when you were on the outs, do you think you were a violent guy? Do you think you were, how would you describe yourself? What kind of stuff? I can get violent, but really, I'm really a, a goofy guy. So. so like, what'd you get? What were some of your charges again? What? Well, this time it was, ten. It was a, um, three counts of intimidation and battery. But they dropped two and gave me one. So who'd you get into it with? Who'd you batter it with? I had two with my brother, and I got two with a neighbor and an officer. And an officer? Uh-huh. Fighting? No, nah, I got two. I, I, got, I got a fight with my brother. Then somebody caught the police. I, got, I chased my uh, neighbor down the street. Then the officer came. I told him I was going to kill him. So. Said what? I told him I was going to kill him. You told the officer you were going to kill him? Yeah. Is that the intimidation? Yeah. Did you mean it? Nah. I just knew it would get me locked up. People are going to find that so hard to believe that you would want to be locked up. I mean, I don't know. It just, I've, been around, I've been around my brother all my life. And like, I'm so used to being with him. I wanted to come. He was the older, bigger brother. You looked up to him? I ain't look up to him. It just, we always together, so I just like to get it. So what's it like for you being on the youth unit at Wabash? Tell us what that's like. Start by saying being on the unit is like whatever. Be truthful. Being on the unit make me feel like I'm the king of that motherfucker. I'm true, I mean, I, it, it, there's a lot of people down there scared of me. Yeah. I, I ain't like like that. You don't like that? I mean, I like it, but that's why, I, like, I put a counsel request in because I wanted to go to the dog block because I feel like couldn't nobody in there handle me. Like. The other kids can't handle you? Yeah. So you think you should be on the adult side because that's really where you feel like you belong. 
So now, I'm about to go to G, G or F, and that's for my brother at E and G house. Because he came from CCU too. When he turned 18, he went to CCU. And he in G house. That's my cousin there too. I'm trying to go over there. So do you feel like you are intimidating to the younger guys on the unit? That's how, that's how, they, that's how they was making it. I mean, people PC'd on me. I mean, people were scared of me, gave me what I wanted. So I liked it. So but it kind of feels good to have that power. You think that feels good to have power around? Yeah. Because some of the kids in there are young. There's, you know, 15-year-old there. Uh, the 15-year-old dude, like, the one upstairs, I was upstairs. I was cool with him. Like, I ain't messing with him like that. I don't, I don't mess with younger people that I think they can't do nothing back to me. I like picking up people on my own side, the bigger than me. So how did you, the 15 year old Colt? Yeah, Lundy? Colt, yeah. yeah. So you smile when I say Colt Lundy. Yeah. How did you feel when he first walked into the unit? Tell me about that. I was at home, um, I was at 214, and they moved him to 213. I mean, he was cool. I, I, I couldn't believe he was 15 though, but my roommate Perkins, he was 15 too. You know, he first got there, his first time. He been there twice, and his second time, he was my roommate, but he's my roommate now. So, I mean, like. So, what's cool about Colt? I don't know. Quietly, he's just cool. I don't know. Little dude. Harmless. <laughs> Harmless. Yeah. Do you know what he's in for? Murder. Did he ever talk to you about it? or? Yeah. We interviewed him. We talked to him a lot. He's yeah. part of this, too. So. so, what do you say to him? You know, what do you guys talk about? I mean, I don't know. It's just. I was just talking to him next door a lot. And we just tell each other stories and he told me what happened. I told him what happened on my case. We laughed about it. Yeah. Just kept going. Do you feel sorry for him at all knowing what kind of sentence he got? No. No? No. Why not? I mean, I don't feel sorry for nobody. I mean, he did his crimes. Basically, he wanted to get locked up. I feel about it. He, he, ain't, he ain't sad about it. Why should I, you feel? So do you make any friends on the unit? Yeah, I got, I got a few. Do I just fuck, I, I, I met with a few. Do you know Miles Folsom? Yeah, we cool. You're cool with Miles? Yeah. So what, what would you say Miles is like, being another guy on the unit? Cause he's got a pretty long sentence too. He played back. We long. I work out with him sometimes. I I, don't know. I holler at him sometimes. We talk a little bit. He cool. What would you want people to know about what it's like being a teenager locked up in an adult facility? I mean, I don't like. It, so I want to buy the lights company, but if they do, they do. It's boring. Really boring, can't do nothing really. You in a room all day. It's not right. And how would you explain what seg's like? How do you even keep track of the days? What's seg like? I don't know, I just do. And like the day go fast though, when you don't know what time it is, they go fast. Really? I would think it would be just the opposite. Nah, uh, go fast because I guess that you know what time it is. And you think it's like one o'clock, you ask what time it is, it'd be three. Um, Do you keep track of the days? Are you counting down? Nah, like, I just, I know what day I got here, so I just count up. It just narrated down to like what day I was here. What day should it be? Have you heard anybody else around you in any of the seg cells? Do they start to go nuts after a while? Mm -hmm. Is this dude upstairs, he a dog. He been here about two and a half years. In SEG? Not like two years. In SEG, two years. In CCU. Are you, I think I know the answer to this already, but are you afraid at all to transition either to another prison when you turn 18 or to transition into the general population here at Wabash? I really, I want to go to um, 
I want to go to a, a different. I want to go to Fullerton with my uncle. So your uncle's locked up too. Hey, my my brother he's in Miami. My other brother in Miami. My uncle he's in Fullerton. I want to go to Fullerton with my uncle though. Okay, so name off for me all the people in your family who are in prison. My brother Brandon, he's in Miami. My cousin Kenny, uh, my brother Kenny, he's in G. My cousin Jamal's in G. My uncle Williams, he in um, Fullerton. My uncle, uh, my cousin James, he's in um, the foreign. My uncle Ricky, he's somewhere I forget where he is though. I think I got another one locked up, not for sure. Though. So we're talking six or seven family members who are all in prison. Uh, my granddaddy, he in Miami. My uncle Sam, he's in New Um, so do you think prison's just sort of a way of life for your family? Nah. You don't feel that way. My uh, my, my father had killed. He died in front of me, my brother Kenny Faye. But my mom, yeah, she's still um, she's still in the picture. She's still on fighting us and stuff. Your dad got killed in front of you. Mm. How? Um, uh, well, some we at we at the house, somebody knocked on the door. I ain't gonna say no names. Somebody knocked on the door. And my dad opened up the door. Dude was like, you motherfucker, pushed him, I guess, then he started shooting. My dad ran back in the, where we was at. And he fell on the ground. He stopped. Like, he started fighting for breath. And he stopped breathing. How old were you? 14. You were 14 when that happened in front of you. Mm -hmm. Do you think that affected you forever? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most kids really can't imagine him and their dad shot and killed him. Though. What did you do after that? Do you even remember? Was it just... What, that day? May 3rd. That's all I could do. And... How do you think your family as a whole handled all that? Um, I... Some got into it. Some, I don't know. Was it gang related? Nah. No. Uh, it was a so called friend. It was a friend that did it. I don't know what happened. I don't know what was funny. Did anybody ever want revenge? I mean, yeah. Okay, final question. When you get out, how do you want your life to be? What do you picture for yourself once you get out of here? I mean, I got a girl right now, so I just really try to just me and her get on a farm or something. I would get in trouble. And if we were to come back, catch up with you again, maybe five years from now, ten years from now? I ain't gonna be here. You won't be here? Uh, Who would we see at that time? What kind of guy would you be at that time? Well, I'm planning on plan, plan, plan going to college when I get out and get my mechanical license. I'll probably be in a shop by then. You probably what? Probably be in a mechanical shop by then. Any final words you would want to say, want anybody to know about you and your life? No. Uh -huh. Do you, can you picture the day you walk out of these doors? Yeah. What's that picture look like? I, I first get out, my mom gonna be there with me a, 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 dick, a dickie's head, put it on. I go to my girl house. Go out deep or something.